Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk with you just for a little bit about sal ammoniac, what it is, what it's used for, how to use it, and how to stay safe when you're using it, which is the most important thing. In my last video, I talked about how to clean your soldering irons tip, what to do when your soldering irons tip will not pick up solder. And I will link that above and below. You can check that out if you haven't seen that video. But one thing that I did not talk about in that video is sal ammoniac. And I actually went and printed out a MSDS, a material safety data sheet online. So I could read through some of that and I'll make it brief. <laughs> it's like, it was like five pages long. I just printed out a couple pages and I went through and I highlighted like the most important things that I wanted you to know so you can stay safe. So I'm gonna show you what sal ammoniac is to start off with. You buy it in a block and it is ammonium chloride. And I store mine like this because I use it for stained glass and I use it for soft solder jewelry making. If you don't know what sal ammoniac is, it is a rare naturally occurring mineral composed of ammonium chloride. And its uses go back to the middle ages, even further back, I'm not gonna get into that. There's a Wikipedia page on it that's really short that you could read and you know get an idea of some of the uses for it, uh, that they, things they used to use it for. Um, the, smelling salts and in baking and those were baking grades. I don't want to get into that too much because I don't want people getting ideas. That's a different kind of sal ammoniac. This is made for the stained glass industry. You buy it in a block and for the soldering industry, I should say, mostly used by people who make stained glass and if you make soldering iron jewelry. In my last video, we talked, like I said, about how to clean the tip of your soldering iron, how to use like a damp sponge. Another way that you can clean it is with a brass sponge. You can buy them where you buy your flux and your solder and your soldering equipment. And I recommend that you go to a stained glass retailer. You can get a lot on Amazon. I do have a complete list down below. If you look down on the left hand side of the screen, there's a button that says YouTube shopping and I will put links there of all the things that I'm talking about in this video. Liquid flux, Nova can liquid flux is what I recommend. Silver gleam lead free solder is what I recommend. Soldering irons, there's all different types. I recommend a high wattage iron. Like I always say, 80 watt and above is great. I recommend a rheostat. And if you don't know what all those things are, check out my other videos. I have lots of videos explaining in detail all about how to buy a soldering iron, how to use a soldering iron, everything soldering irons. So getting back to sal ammoniac. Now it's a block and I have two workstations, I had two studios. So I actually broke mine in half so I could have like one half in one studio. And I've had this for like 30 years. So, I mean, it lasts a long, long time. So you only really need a small block of it. And the way you use it, and like I said, you need to keep it in a, a closed, container like a plastic container with a lid. I keep mine on this little old plate. This is a plate that I got from a thrift store. I will never use it. I will never eat off of it obviously. It is only for my sal ammoniac. And the way that you use this, you have a hot soldering iron, right? And, and your soldering iron tip is like just not picking up solder. You've tried using the, you know, the brass sponge. You've tried using the wet sponge. It's still, you're not happy with it. You've tried retinning it, which again, I talked about in the last video. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take your flux brush, I use one of these, it's like an acid brush, and you're gonna take your liquid flux, or, or I guess if you could use like gel flux or, I, or paste flux, I use liquid, it's just, it's what I prefer, it's what I recommend. And you're going to dip this into your liquid flux and just, you need one drop, just a tiny little bit. And if you don't wanna use your brush, you also could just use like a Q-tip, and you're just gonna put a little drop right on a spot on your block of sal ammoniac. Little drop there. Uh, with your hot soldering iron, you're going to rub it on there. Keep it away from this. I pull this plastic off when I'm using it, obviously. You're gonna rub it on there and make sure you get like all the different sides. And that's how you use it. And that, you know, you're gonna touch some solder onto your tip when you're doing this. And it's just, it's gonna totally coat the tip of your soldering iron. It's gonna be so shiny and silver and it's gonna work great. But I want you to know the most important thing about sal ammoniac. I want you to know how dangerous it can be if you're not using it correctly. This is a safety data sheet for sal ammoniac and you can get them online. You could just Google it. There's all the, not, um, Harvard has one. This one I think I got from MIT. Um, they're just, you can find them anywhere online. Uh, common name is ammonium chloride. And the two things that are the most important are your safety equipment 
and what it can do to you if you are not using protection. Hazards identification. So they have four classifications of hazard identification. The first one is acute toxicity, oral. Don't wanna eat it. Two, eye irritation. Three, acute aquatic toxicity. Bad for aquatics, bad for fish, especially rainbow trout and carp. It kills them and changes them. And uh, chronic aquatic toxicity, which just means the chronic, which means it, like I said, it will change, it'll get into those fish and they won't be the same. Hazard statements, it is harmful if you swallow it. It causes serious eye irritation. It's very toxic again to aquatic life and with long lasting effects. Um, precautionary statements. So you wanna wash your skin thoroughly after you handle it. Definitely wear gloves. So I'll get to that in a second, but precautionary, wash skin thoroughly after handling it. Do not eat, drink, or smoke when you're using this. And when you're soldering, you should be smoking anyway. When you're soldering, you never ever eat or drink because you can pick up like particulate matter on your hands and you're touching your mouth. So that's a giant no-no. No drinking, no eating. If you need a drink, wash your hands, go over there, get your drink, you know, and then come back to your workstation. Avoid release into the environment. So you're not gonna take it and throw it in the trash. You need to contact your township where you live and it is a hazardous waste disposal you'll need. Wear protective gloves, protective clothing, eye protection, face protection. Call a poison control center if it is ingested, if you eat it. Keep it away from children and pets. These chemicals and uh, materials that we use for soldering shouldn't be anywhere around children. So yeah, uh, next thing. Composition information. None of the materials in this product are listed as carcinogens, which means they say it does not cause cancer, but it can cause you know, very serious illness and it's really bad for the environment. Uh, medical conditions generally aggravated by exposure. If you have any weakness of the lungs, kidneys, or liver, that will be aggravated. So I have asthma, so I'm extra careful when I use cell ammoniac and I use it. It's a great tool that you can use for soldering if you use it the right way. As long as you are following precautions and you're doing things the way you're supposed to and you're being careful, then use it. Accidental release measures, personal protections and equipment. It says use personal protective equipment, avoid dust formation, avoid breathing vapors, dust, mist, or gas. Ensure adequate ventilation. So that's the first thing. You know how on your soldering station, you I always say that you need to use a fume extractor. You need some type of a fan. Actually, a fan's not really good. People say, well, you can work with a fan. You can work with a fan, but what does a fan do? It's just blowing things around. It's not absorbing them. So you need to have a, you can use a really good air purifier. I have a great one in my house. And if I want to solder at my kitchen table, I just plug that in. I'll link down below to it as well. I use it in my house all the time. And I can just put that on my workstation and I'll turn it on high or medium even. And it just pulls all the fumes when you're working. So when you touch your hot soldering iron to your block of sal ammoniac, it's going to be a light wispy smoke you'll see. And you do not want to breathe that in. And a lot of times it'll create different chemicals will create fumes that you can't even see like flux you know so you always want to use a fume extractor work in a well ventilated area uh, so we, so we said avoid breathing in environmental precautions do not let product enter drains never wash it down your drain okay discharge into the environment must be avoided Handling and storage, storage recommendations, store in a tightly closed plastic container, keep them in a, a dry and well-ventilated space. It's hygroscopic, which means it will absorb moisture from the air. And I found that out when I had this in my basement for a while. I had it in my basement, like I wasn't working down there at all. And I went back to it and I'm like, oh, it's starting to crumble a little bit. Isn't that odd? So yeah, you definitely need to keep it in a container with a lid and you want to keep it in a dry area. Um, control measures. This is the next section. It says you, they recommend using a P95 particle respirator. And we're really familiar with the respirator since going through the last few years with the, you know, all the COVID stuff and everything. But I do have recommendations for soldering, just the same one that you use for like when you're soldering for soldering fumes, that kind of thing. That's fine. Wear a mask 
it, it's common sense, right? Wear safety glasses for sure. It'll irritate your eyes. It give you big problems. If you're working in a really well ventilated area, like I said, have a fume extractor there, sucking the fumes out of the air while you're working, you'll be fine. A uh, good air purifier, that works great as well. As long as it is one that has a certified filter, that it's not just a you know, a cheap junky one, you get a good one. A protective gloves, they recommend that. I don't ever touch it. I keep it on here and it's covered up and it is on a plate. So the most that I'm getting near it is taking this paper and pulling it back and covering it up. But I still wash my hands after I do that. Eye protection, safety glasses. You always need safety glasses. Rubber apron, that's another thing that I do talk about in some of my books, my soldering books. I recommend wearing an apron when you're soldering. Um, you know, don't ever solder over your lap. Make sure you work on a work surface. I recommend one that has like a lip on it, like a little edge. So if you drop a ball of solder, it's not gonna roll off and hit you in the lap. You don't want that. So yeah, you can wear an apron if you like. And then on the last page here, I'm talking about ecological information, toxicity to fish, carp, rainbow trout. And it has measurements here that I don't understand, but obviously we're taking their word for it about how much that, you know, is harmful to these animals. No, definitely you can wash your hands if you get it on your hands, obviously, but you're not taking it out to a lake and throwing it in, you know, a lake or the ocean or anything like that. Like I said, it is non-carcinogenic. It is not known to cause cancer. It is harmful if swallowed. It causes serious eye irritation. It is very toxic to aquatic life and very toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects. So, you know, you read these kind of things and, and it can be a little scary and you think, oh, do I really want to do that? Can I use that? But this is knowledge is power. You know, you need to know what you're using. You need to know how to protect yourself when you're using it. And it's a great, like I said, it's a great tool for soldering. It's going to keep your soldering iron tip nice and shiny and clean. There are alternatives. If you don't want to use salamoniac, you can try using a damp sponge. I talk about that in the last video. Also like a brass sponge, those are readily available as well for a couple dollars and you could try that. But yeah, so I want to talk about that. And you know, when I did the last video about the solder not sticking to your irons tip, and we talked all about that, and there, I purposefully didn't talk about salamoniac because I didn't want everybody to think, well, that's just the thing that you can go do. You should try the other things first. I do think it's an essential part of your soldering setup. I recommend it in my books. If you don't know me, my name is Laura Beth Love. I'm an expert in soft soldering, and I am the author of the best-selling jewelry book, Boho Chic Jewelry and Soldered Alchemy, which is more projects using soft solder. And this is currently like my best seller, soldering iron jewelry. If you want to learn how to solder with a soldering iron and lead free solder to make jewelry, this is the complete, complete guide. Start to finish. I cover everything in here and it has 20 great projects. Full color, lots of great projects. Broken China Jewelry Book is my book I released last year. Again, this is 25 projects, all using Broken China. There are a few soldering projects in here and lots of other ways that you can make China jewelry as well. You don't have to always use solder. So my fifth book is coming out very soon. When I say very soon, in the next couple months, I'm finishing it up. It's a decorative soldering book. And I will talk more about that in the future when I am closer to releasing it. I hate talking about it too much because I'm not like r really right there yet. I need to cover and to finish up some editing and some indexing. But anyway, I hope this was informative. I hope you learned something. Like I said, I'm a big advocate for staying safe. You know, artists, craftspeople, your health, it's the most important thing you have, right? So let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Do you use salamoniac? Have you ever heard of it? Do you want to try it? When I talk about, oh, you have to wear safety glasses and you have to have a respirator and a fume extractor, sometimes you, that can sound like kind of scary, like, oh, I don't want to do that craft. Like, it's just common sense. It's like wearing your seatbelt when you drive your car, right? You get in your car, you put your seatbelt on. Of course, you're going to wear your seatbelt. Well, of course, you're going to wear safety glasses, right? And you would if you were doing woodworking. You'd probably wear earplugs as well. You, at least you don't have to wear those when you solder. I wear my Bose headphones when I solder, and I'm going to tell you about that sometime soon. But um, yeah, so I guess that's pretty much all I have to say. Like I had mentioned before in my last video, I do have a project coming up for you. I've been working hard on it. I am just doing so many things at one time. 
but I am trying to keep these projects coming. So until next time, give it a like if you like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you hit the little bell next to the subscribe button, you'll get a notification when I release a new video. And check out my books. Definitely check out, if you're going to check out any of them, check out this one, Soldering Iron Jewelry. This is a fabulous book. So many really cool projects. And I guess that's all I have to say. If you have any comments or questions or anything you want to say, just leave a comment below. So until next time, I'll see you later, guys. Bye.